blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. Today's lesson is Research Hypothesis. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss the differences between null and alternative hypothesis, cite the importance of making hypotheses in your research study, and list the hypotheses for your research paper if applicable. Hypothesis is a prediction of what might be the answer to your research question or questions, and it typically focus on the relationship of two different variables used in the study according to Crossman in 2019. Formulating hypothesis is one of the most tedious tasks in writing a research paper. The hypothesis gives directions to the collection and interpretation of data, thus it should be well-grounded and written before the said actions. Prieto et al. in 2019 stated that the hypothesis is written in declarative format starting or stating expected relationships between the phenomena to which our concepts refer. Also, a hypothesis is a tentative explanation that accounts for a set of facts and can be tested by further investigation. Here are examples of well-written hypotheses. Replacing the battery yearly can make my car to run more miles. The more vegetables I eat, the healthier I become. Watering the plants every day makes them grow faster and greener. Playing Mobile Legends has negative effects on my sleeping pattern. And smartphone helps people communicate better than the traditional letters. However, not all studies or research papers need a hypothesis. Most of the qualitative type of research does not need hypotheses as they are exploratory. When we say exploratory research, if you can recall, this explores areas throughout uh, totally to develop some hypotheses that can be used or tested in future researches. Most of the quantitative researches, on the other hand, has a hypothesis. The best example is the experimental type of research where the researcher needs to test if one variable is affecting the other or if they have a significant relationship, etc. If the study you are planning to do does not require a hypothesis, it should not stop you from learning the basics of a hypothesis, like knowing when to include it and how to compose it. Let's have the nature of hypothesis. The hypothesis is a statement of what is intended to be investigated. It should be specified before the research is conducted. And the problem cannot be scientifically solved unless it is reduced to hypothesis form. What are the characteristics of a good hypothesis? These characteristics are according to Baraceros in 2019 and Prasad et al. in 2001. First, a hypothesis can be tested, whether verifiable or falsifiable. It is logical. It is directly related to the research problem. Hypotheses are not moral or ethical questions. It is neither too specific nor too general. It is a prediction of consequences. It sets the limits of the study. And it is considered valuable even if proven false. Moving on, it's time to learn the purpose and importance of hypothesis in research. Hypothesis serves a very important role in conducting research. 
Here are the importance and purpose of the hypothesis as stated by Baraceros in 2019. First, it provides a tentative explanation of phenomena and facilitates the extension of knowledge in the area. Second, it provides the investigator with a relational statement that is directly testable in a research study. Third, it provides direction to the research. It provides a framework for reporting conclusions of the study. Fourth, it could be considered as the working instrument of theory. It can be deducted from theory and other hypotheses. Moving on, let's have the types of hypotheses. The first one is the null hypothesis or age sub zero. It represents a theory that has been put forward either because it is believed to be true or because it is used it is to be used as a basis for argument but has not been proven. Second is the alternative hypothesis or age sub A. It is a statement of what a hypothesis test is set up to establish. This is the op opposite of the null hypothesis and can only be reached once the null hypothesis is rejected. Mostly, the alternative hypothesis is the actual desired answer of the researcher or researchers. Let's have the example. For the null hypothesis, there is no difference between the two medicines on average. For the alternative hypothesis, the two medicines have different effects on average. Look at this figure. This shows the process of making the research hypothesis. Research should start from the research problem, that is, everything should start here. Then, she has to gather relative information about her topic, for example, from the researcher's observations or stock knowledge and from the related literature and studies that she found either from uh, the internet or other sources. From those observations and related literature, the researcher can now create or craft he, uh, her statement of the problem, which includes the general problem and specific objectives. Once the researcher created the statement of the problem, the next step is to make a conceptual framework or the research paradigm, from which we have learned this from the previous module or from the previous lesson. From that research paradigm, you can use that as a reference to list your hypothesis. A research study can have more than one hypothesis depending on the needs of the research paper. That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.